All right, there we go. Hello everyone, how's it going? Team here, and this is a weekly BXJS live stream. We are not gonna be doing much coding today, I think, but um, here's basically what I wanna do. So if you haven't heard, we had a bit of a problem with the YouTube uh, in form of them, uh, what was it, community striking one of my videos for some weird reason and uh, now I'm thinking basically where to move, right? So one of the options was using dev.2 website, uh, which is quite nice. And uh, Ben said that basically they will be more than happy to host the videos. But anyway, we have a lot of things uh, in the BXJS, um, how do you call it? Like BXJS, plat no, platform is a wrong word. BXJS family, that also sounds terrible, but basically in BXJS area, right? So we have the code, we have the videos, we have the BXJS Weekly, we have our Discord server, and it would be kind of nice to sort of organize all of that into maybe one website. And um, I'm wondering, you know, what would be the best way? So I'm, I'm essentially today's stream is more or less, you know, like whatever, just send your questions to the chat if you have any, and let's, let's just talk. And if there's not gonna be any questions, I'm basically gonna be thinking out loud onto how to build that website, what kind of technologies do we wanna use and what exactly do we need on that website? So this is the general idea of the stream. Um, I mean, we'll see how long it will, will take. Maybe we even start building something, but at least I wanna outline uh, what kind of features and uh, do we want from the website and how it should maybe look in, in general, you know? So let us, I guess, start by writing down the um, website planning. Let's call it this way, why not? And I mean, maybe a bit bigger. Okay, there we go. So first thing we wanna look is that uh, what kind of areas or like, let's call them pages we're gonna have. So we're gonna have videos, right? We're gonna have a schedule. This is a streaming schedule. This is also something that should be there. We're gonna have a Discord link, the Discord, yes, this is how it's spelled. So we're gonna have Discord link. We are gonna have, uh, blah, blah, um, that is too many windows. Um, GitHub, come on. GitHub, or I guess code links. Um, here's the question. We need anything else? Oh yeah, right, uh, weekly thing, VXJS weekly news. Um, I think that's it, right? So the, I guess the code links could actually be merged into the videos likely. Is this what I'm thinking? Might contain links to code, a bit of description and so on and so forth, right? Streaming schedule, and I guess there should be like, basically not just Discord links, but rather social links. And this is gonna be like Discord, Twitch, ADC, right? GitHub codes, uh, may, I mean, it's probably gonna be here and in, in here as well, right? So where this can be killed. And now this is the, likely the trickiest bit because we need two things. One thing is that we need is the weekly, um, current week page basically, right? The other thing we need is search and it's also would be nice to have um, sort of a auto tagging, I guess, of uh, articles. You know, in a way, in a way that uh, right now, if you go to BXJS Weekly, what you get is this. Um, blah, blah, blah. No, 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 that's not what I wanted to open. Come on. So what you get right now is this um, markdown, right, with a bunch of links, and all you have is titles to go from, right? So it would be nice if we could have a collection of tags. That will be like, hey, this is actually an article about GraphQL, and uh, I don't know what is. This is probably just GraphQL, right? Or this is probably a poor example, but uh, there you go. So you know, for example, we have the JSON Web Token. So there's going to be like JWT. Another is probably they're using Express. I'm guessing, yes. Yeah, so like Express, and you get the idea, right? And ideally, we would want that to be done. Um, 
automatically like this is a tricky feature to pull off but we probably could use some basic nlp to do that search is well it's not too hard to do but uh so we can do like yes or no not yes then what, what am i saying um elastic search right uh, is another one option or we could do what is the thing that everyone uses there's this hn search uh algolia right so how does their api actually because they have a really nice search and uh, they provide it as a software as a service so i'm kind of curious how exactly that would look search api um requested demo watch a video how does it work right so how does it work get started uh how do you first of all how do you get the content here's the question do we have to index our thing or and just plug it into my repository pricing that's also interesting 35 bucks per month holy crap okay that is expensive <laughs> Would be cheaper to roll our own Elasticsearch on the server than doing that. Okay, then. Uh, free for open source. Oh, okay. Now that is nice. Uh, who qualifies uh, licensed open source software, developers, community projects, nonprofit organizations? Non commercial, publicly available, high record of operation count. Um, it's free for a certain number. Require more than that. Okay. Um, the basic community. So there's a community plan somewhere, but uh, I don't really see it. Oh yeah, there you go, community. Lighting fast search, because 10K records. Here's the question, how much do we have? Hey Haptic, welcome to the stream. Okay, so they provide 10K records, 100K operations, that probably should be enough. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a look at, whoops, that is not what I wanted to do. Uh, at how much do we actually have in the, what do you call it, in the BXJS repository, right? I don't remember if I actually have it here. Yes, I should do something about that highlighting, uh, whoops, weekly. Let me just pull that real quick and we're gonna check how many lines do we actually have. Right, um, VC minus L links right and so we got 2030 uh 2349 lines uh which is way below way below the count of 10,000 records i mean we don't we don't really need to index everything right so out of those 56 lines there's like these 10 of them is just metadata essentially the headers and all that kind of stuff plus we don't really want to index all of the things so i guess I guess that should be fine. Free forever, must display search by Algolia. Well, that doesn't matter too much. So Algolia seems to be an option. Algolia community account. 10K items, 100K queries. Although, I mean, the good thing about that is that we don't really need a server for hosting that, right? But we still would need some sort of a server for the website itself. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking, you know, if it's worth going for Algolia where well, we can have our own Elasticsearch because we would need to index the data anyway somehow, right? I'm guessing. Where's the documentation? View the docs. Does actually work? Interactive tutorial, uh, data sample. Okay, this is UI. Yes. Okay, e-commerce SaaS media. I mean, it doesn't doesn't really matter how it looks. How do I index this stuff? Pick your data set. Yes. Okay. Push the data. There we go. That's what interests me. So JavaScript. Firebase community embraces Algolia for search, but I doubt you're using Firestore. Oh, that's actually interesting. Fire. I mean, I'm, I don't know if we need Firestore. Like, okay, let's see. What does Firebase actually provides here? So first of all, pricing. That's what the most interesting thing, right? So we got the free Spark plan. Includes a bunch of products, 100 simultaneous connections. Well, I doubt we will have more than that one gigabyte stored and 100 gigabyte a month of traffic well that's not too bad i mean for a free tier that's actually really good 
Hey Skyoli, uh, welcome to the stream. I mean, Firebase is great. Yeah, for some cases it's just amazing and the fact that they give so much in a free tier is really awesome. So let's see, document, uh, 20K documents per day, okay. And 50K reads per day, that is, that is definitely more than enough. Um, okay, but we don't, we don't really need cloud functions. I, we could experiment and just do the whole thing as a cloud function. <laughs> that probably could work. Virtual device. Whoa. Okay, they have added quite a bunch of ML kits. Okay, got. I last time I looked at the Firebase, it had like twice as little features. That is, I mean, that's really cool. Um. Okay, that is expensive. Yeah, machine learning kit. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um. I, 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 again, I don't know if we need Firebase. So basically what I would prefer is that we have this repository and uh, we somehow integrate the website over it, you know. Uh, hey, Kepler. Yeah, it's, you know, it's a bit sad, but I, I would say it's more annoying than anything else, but ugh, whatever. All right, yeah, I mean, this, like the Firebase now looks amazing to be honest. And if I would build, uh, if I would need to build something very quickly that would need a backend instead of building it, then uh, yeah. Sexy code you showed us may gone against the guidelines. <laughs> Please tell me that's not true. <laughs> or do you think the 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 bot in, in YouTube was like, hmm, that code is too good. Let me just flag it. <laughs> that, that sounds terrible. <laughs> Okay. Um, right. Okay, coming back to <laughs> coming back to the website and BXGS Weekly. So here's the here's what I ideally want to do, right? I want to have a website that automatically picks up, I guess, as a GitHub hook every time I create a new markdown entry here in the repo, it would index it, put it into the Elasticsearch or Algolia or whatever. And then show a really nicely formatted um, thing on a website, right? Where you can actually look through the articles, look at the tags and do things like this. We might, so um, let's add this hosting options. So we got Firebase free tier, right? Uh, which might as well work quite well for the data, for data. We can do what? We can just straight up buy a server as I already said. Um, a e g Hetzner, like Hetzner has amazing things. The downside is that it's obviously hosted in Germany, so it's not going to be that fast worldwide. Maybe if Bender from Futurama gets hot when C code, why not YouTube bots? Um, that <laughs> that's a fair point, but uh, you sort of you sort of you know expect YouTube to be at least a tiny bit serious about what they do, but uh, hey, apparently that's not the case. It might as well be a YouTube banner. We we will never know. <laughs> okay, uh, so we got this. Oh yeah, right. There is now, right? There is. Wait a second. So here's the question. Now shell. Uh, a MongoDB is a solution that is true, but uh, the problem with MongoDB is that the full text search that it provides is not as good, and this is exactly what we want to have. So uh, let me just clarify a bit. Like we have this list of articles and news, right? This is very basic. And if you would do a text search over this, it's really easy implement, to implement and even Mongo would work. But what I actually want to do is I want to allow as well searching over the article text, which I may be just overthinking it. And I know as a fact that full text search in Mongo and large documents doesn't really perform that well. So even Combining Elasticsearch with Mongo would be like 20 times faster, basically. I tried it on like large data sets and um, just don't, don't want to step on this rake anymore. <laughs> okay, uh, coming back to the now shell. So where is the pricing now? I, I know that they have the free tier here. Where's the pricing? God damn it. I'll forget how tight now DNS. Come on. Are you for real? Um, pricing, there you go. Why is it has to be hidden? No, Mongo is not garbage. Mongo is actually very good in very specific use cases, right? I mean, we've been using it to do some 
a relatively large data set analysis and it worked out really well. I mean, MapReduce works amazingly well in it and you can run MapReduce function, pretty complex one over a data set that includes over, a, okay, not over, near to a billion of documents in under a second. Like it would be really hard to do MapReduce like this in SQL. So, uh, yes, I mean, yeah, sure, absolutely. Feel free to throw in more provoking phrases like this. I will absolutely jump on them. <laughs> okay, let's see the site plans for now. So they got the OSS, one gigabyte of bandwidth. What does the bandwidth mean in this case? What do you mean by bandwidth? Uh, what does the bandwidth mean? Why do you have to be like this? Why do you never explain? 100 megabyte of logs, unlimited deployments, three instances, unlimited domains, no CDN domains, five megabytes per file, one gig storage, no auto scale, and team sees. Anyway, that sounds, so what is the bandwidth? Does it mean that I only get one gigabyte of traffic from them? Um, is, is like, are they, like, I mean, I get it, it's a free offer, but it's better to pay for unlimited bandwidth or something than one gigabyte, really. Or is it per service? Then it's a different thing. Wait a second. Site bandwidth with the limit. Uh, frequently asked questions. That sounds like a good place to go. Where is the bandwidth? Um, where do I see my bandwidth and local? Uh, yeah, okay, so let me see. I do have site accounts since forever, but I don't think I ever used it for anything yet beyond like simple testing projects. Um, event alias is the main usage. Main span, what does bandwidth mean? Okay. Band, band, come on. No, that's digital one man. I. That is um, charged only for the bandwidth. Okay, what do you mean under bandwidth? All static deployments, you make computational resources. I guess that also means the, basically whatever the people download. That, that is not a model I enjoy, let me put it this way. Okay, so it would be easier to just buy our own server at this point. Because we, like even if we use Firebase, right, and we store the data in there, we would still need some sort of a static hosting solution. And I am guessing it would be straight up better to just uh, buy a decent server and run Elasticsearch and Mongo or SQL or like Postgres or whatever we have in there. Okay, um, let's see. So Hetzner. Is there, is there anything? Hetzner is probably one of my favorite providers because you can buy things ridiculously cheap in here and say, you know, we want, we want to host our own videos. So we need like three terabytes, 20, 22 euro per month. This is nothing. And I mean, the CPU is not exactly that good, but you do get 16 gigs of RAM and three terabytes in rate, which is great. Hey Bacao, welcome to the stream. Um, yeah, I mean, absolutely, you know, as always, this is definitely gonna be, uh, this is definitely gonna be um, VOD somewhere. But yeah, okay, uh, you're clearly leaning to Hetzner, pull the trigger. Yes, Hetzner does have unlimited bandwidth. The only problem, yes, is the, the content delivery network that would basically make it super fast for all of the world. But uh, let me think. So I, I assume, here's the question, does Hetzner hosts themselves on Hetzner? Is, the, is that a thing? Uh, whoops, that is not what I want, ping Hetzner D. So is that a Hetzner subnet? This is, of course, this has to be IPv6. Um, is it auto copies it now? Yeah, there you go. Okay, there we go. Okay, um, IP resolve. Okay, resolve domain to IP. No, not the, not this way. I guess, oh yeah, we probably can, no. Who is want help? Can you look up IP address to the provider? IP 
address to hoster be the host no not the host name oh come on host tip i doubt there's a cdn solution cheap for that large amount of videos i mean the the thing is that i might like so i as i already said we've i've, I've asked uh ben um and i always forget his last name <laughs> the one of the creators of the um, oh, dev.2 uh, Ben Halpern uh, I've asked him if they're going to be okay if I just come and upload my old YouTube channel to dev2 because they do have the option to host the videos there right which is like if you go to dashboard you get this upload a video button and it works relatively well right I had so far I've been uploading some of the weeklies here and the only problem I had was with the weekly 33, which is just, you know, stuck in limbo for a bit. They're investigating it right now. So I'm thinking that if I just post videos with them, uh, they also got this new feature that is super cool where you can uh, create, where is that, the series name. So you can basically say this is going to be BXJS weekly. And it's going to be one large series of posts that will be linked with each other so you can actually switch between them which is i think really cool idea so hosting videos is not a major problem as well as uh, cdn in this case for the videos because they are using uh, amazon web services so it should not be a big problem essentially embedding their videos into the website you know the problem is the website itself and i wanted to actually see webs i probably oh yeah right i did not copy this come on come here god damn it what is it okay resolve ip no resolve host name to ip uh who is uh hetzner d amazon charge you by server usage beside other factors amazon have a lot of very uh, different pricing things for very different services because like the Amazon Web Services is an incredibly large and incredibly complex thing that is includes like billion products and solutions, right? Like they, look at the categories they have. Uh, just followed you on Dev2. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, like you have the the typical thing that most of people use is the... Um, compute so you you have the ec2 instances right and this is indeed basically like a separate server right so you got the separate virtual server and you pay for uptime and that's it but you also have things like functions like storage and in case of storage for example you pay per gigabyte and it's actually quite cheap especially if you buy in bulk i think they have some specific pricing for like us i um, Okay, the region also changes the pricing a bit, but it's basically like two cents, two and a half cent per 50 terabyte, which is like, that is really cheap. 50 terabyte, just think about that for a second. So, yeah, it's like, you know, it's, if you're, if you're already paying for that, I don't think they actually measure S3. Um, that's a good question, actually. S3 bandwidth, bandwidth limit. I don't know if they have any bandwidth limit. Uh, cloud storage. Let's see, bandwidth. Like, I'm not exactly an expert in Amazon Web Services. I only worked with the EC2 instances, and specifically, we use them for scaffolding a really large big data testing platforms and just running some experiments in there. So, you know, I'm not that proficient with everything else, but uh, how many buckets can I have? Streaming bandwidth limitations, Amazon S3. Uh, it's hard to believe, is this available capacity? So 40 gigabit per second is available capacity. That is a lot. Um, da -da -da, shared by all. Okay, so it's the physical limitation basically of the data center, which sounds like, yeah, reasonable. What is actually, do they have any? Doesn't seem like they have any bandwidth limitation uh s3 largest yeah it doesn't seem like they have any limits on the bandwidth so as soon as long as you basically put the data on s3 and as, as long as you host it there you can download it as many times as you want i guess filling 
because I mean, it, if they had some sort of limitations, it would, it would be in pricing, right? And as far as I can see here, you pay per gigabyte. So yeah, requests not otherwise specified below. Get posts, uh, okay. You also have this infrequent request, which is interesting. So if you need to store data somewhere for a long time, but request it occasionally, it's even, it's like one cent per gigabyte. This is insane. Uh, but yeah, okay, anyway. Um, apparently, you know, Ben said that Dev2 is, can handle that. So this is really cool. And this is what I'm gonna be doing. And I wanted to test uh, Hetzner PE. This is this IP address and um, there is there information about the IP address. Essentially what I wanna do, I create IP geolocation. They char uh, what do you mean they charge for it? Like there's definitely no limit and they seems to be charging just per gigabyte unless it's like uh, time limited or the infrequent storage or whatever that was, uh, you know, not as far as I can see is like there's no additional charges, I guess. S3 um, charging for downloads. I like I <laughs> cloud storage pricing. Yeah, this is what we looked at, right? Yeah, so you got the standard storage, 23 cents per gigabyte, uh, infrequent access, otherwise noted, prices inclusive, uh, that, blah, blah, blah. Request pricing. Oh, there you go, okay. Request not otherwise specified below. Um, get, select, or all other requests. You get additional 004 cent per thousand requests. That is also, I mean, in comparison to the price of the gigabyte, that is negligible, you know, unless you're serving like 100 millions of requests to the same data, which is, I guess you should just put a proxy, like caching proxy in front of that instead of relying on S3 itself. Because I think Amazon, wait, Amazon Web Services proxy probably have caching proxy, probably have some sort of caching solution as well. As to the charges weren't there. I mean, maybe I just don't understand how it works. As I said, you know, I am not an Amazon Web Services expert. Neither should you take my advice on it because the only thing that I understand there is the EC compute instances and that's it. Um, right, so we got cache S3. Okay, so they are suggesting using Amazon CloudFront in front of S3 storage to do web caching and I guess this is exactly what you wanna do. It's like the Amazon Web Services is so bloody complex that it would probably take like months over months to figure out how to properly structure everything. Or you would just, you know, get one of their experts and talk to him. <laughs> but uh, yes, it can get slightly ridiculous. Okay, let me think. Um, so here's the question, do we really wanna do we really want to get those keywords out of the articles or do we just want to do the search by by title? What do you guys think? Would you search like the articles by title only or would you be interested in looking at the keywords as well? And here's the other question. Are there any actually simple keywords that we can just grab from the, there's the terrible way of viewing it. No, nah, come on, that's not what I want to press. Uh, maybe we can just get the keywords from the head, right? The metadata, mm, description, author, come on, where's my keywords? Gotta be some keywords, right? Description, title, theme, really? Um, okay, I guess not. So nobody adds keywords to the metadata anymore, it seems. It's slightly surprising to be honest, but um, hey. Okay, let me think. So how do we can get keyword, I mean, <laughs> using software as a service for keyword extraction is one option. Extraction, uh, no JS. Obviously the stupidest way would be to just take like retext keywords or whatever that do the naive approach to keyword extraction and just do that, which produces decent enough um, 
results, you know, I mean, they're not amazing, but meta keyword is obsolete in terms of SEO. Oh, I see. Okay. That explains it. I am very far away from SEO. That's, that's probably why I'm so, you know, why my channel is so small because I don't understand anything about SEO or marketing or <laughs> any other of those things. Uh, but yes. Okay. Thank you for clarifying. That is really good to know that it's actually obsolete. So nobody uses it. All right. So you cannot actually get keywords like this. Huh. I mean, Hey, some have it. Welcome to the stream. Okay. But uh, yeah, I guess we can drop the keywords for the first version at least, and then figure it out later. Auto tagging can be added as an extended feature. So videos, uh, I guess this might just be a collection of dev two posts essentially, right? Since we said we're going to be hosting everything on a dev two. Then we're going to have the streaming schedule, which is super simple social links, which is also simple, which probably should be like one page. So like, uh, I guess, info page, right? So I guess this is going to be how it should be. And then we got this stuff here. And probably the info page should be the first one. The XGS weekly should be the second one. Yeah, happy Halloween, guys. This is, um, you know, it's not exactly the a uh, thing that is widely celebrated in Russia. So it's a bit weird for me still, even after all these years in Germany, when we got like kids knocking on the door and be like, yeah, candy. <laughs> but yeah, happy Halloween to whoever celebrates it. Okay. Um, so I guess the trickiest part is actually the weekly news. And here's the question. Do we want the whole website or maybe we just do the weekly website? Hmm. That is, that is, in, okay. I mean, since we're building the whole thing, so why not do a BXGS website? Yes, this is a BXGS website checklist or rather than not a checklist, but sort of figuring out what exactly we want to have there and how exactly should it work. And looks like we're going to need the backend anyway. I mean, I have my own server already, right? So I got the, um, where is it? I got my codezen.net thing that is, this is my website, everyone. I built very complex big data processing semantic web applications and my website looks like this. <laughs> because I'm too lazy to make anything better than this. Okay, but yeah, I have like a very basic server that I took on Scaleway that hosts like five or six of my demos. Uh, the pricing Scaleway has is incredibly cool uh, like you can get this um where, where are they starts yeah there you go so one m starter with four gigs of ram and four cores and 100 gigs of hard drive for just eight euro per month like this thing can host quite a lot of demos and works really really well at least so far for me you know i've been hosting there for the past year i guess now and I guess if we're not doing any heavy lifting like keyword extraction, then probably this server would be enough. So what would we need to have is a static page with just like streaming schedule widgets, uh, maybe, maybe Twitter feeds, Twitter feeds, uh, question mark. Like, I don't know if, if that needs to be here because my Twitter feed is not exactly purely BXJS focused. I post a bit too much bullshit in there. So that might not be the best thing. Um, again, let me just move it to the bottom, right? So at least we want streaming schedule, social links like Twitch, Discord, GitHub, Twitter itself. Um, what else do we have? Facebook page. I still don't know why I have that. Um, Reddit and so on and so forth. Do more streams and the donations will pour in. I mean, I'm not doing this for donations, right? Like it's like, Luckily for me, as I said in the video on YouTube, this is not uh, this is not my main source of income, right? I'm doing those streams for for fun, and I would love to do more live streams and I would love to do more coding streams, but unfortunately, I don't have that much time yet. At least you know there's some like university projects going and the startup thing going, and from time to time, it's a bit tricky to find time to do that, but uh, I'm finally back to schedule. So don't break this. Don't, don't you tell me that I should do more. <laughs> I just fixed my schedule with streaming, man. <laughs> okay. Um, so I got the social links. Let me think. 
we got bxs weekly so it should be the oh yeah it should be archive as well right this is what i'm missing so we got the latest news we got the archive we got the search which um I don't really want to use the ugh, maybe just the MongoDB would work here. Just Mongo. Um, here's also the question: Can you just can we just be like? Con I mean, social links is essentially the contact, right? The email should be here as well. There you go. So I'm thinking: Can we just do the search by by uh, just just files? Like, as in, you know, take the repository get the raw files and immediately run the search maybe in memory but i mean that's that's not going to scale obviously but there's like what 34 documents here and let's see links a minus l uh no, no no that's what i want so that is 200 lines and then um 300 kilobytes of text, which is, yeah, nothing. So probably we can do like just files, basic and memory search, memory search, but then it needs some sort of a mechanism for reindexing it why once the new file is created. So this is also a question. Uh, I guess we have to expand the search. So this is gonna be the tricky bit. And I guess we have to, you know what? I'm gonna move that into a separate, um, Austin current scaleway server. Um, so search. So search is probably going to be the trickiest bit of it. And uh, basically memory search. So this is options, right? Uh, technology options. Let's call it this way. Whoops. And then we got uh, questions. To answer basically one is gonna be how to to trigger update um, in index update blah, come on I cannot spell today on uh, git push this is one we have any other pre I mean I think that might be the only issue that actually we have to solve because everything else seems to be relatively straightforward it might be like it might be that, oh, you know what? I also wanted uh, dedupe service. So I wanted um, CI pipeline, I don't know. So I wanted basically to um, create the second branch, like a develop branch or whatever, right? And commit the file there. And when I, and when I merge the thing into the master branch, it will basically tell me if there are any duplicates articles because it is becoming hard to track if I already mentioned something or not. Can't spell today, not a native English speaker, still types faster in English than, I mean, typing is not, come on, typing is easy, right? You just type for thousands of hours and you become faster naturally. You don't even have to try. This doesn't count. <laughs> It comes with practice is what I'm saying. Um, but okay, okay, so we need, maybe we should start, hmm. And I, okay, wait a second. So here's the question. If we would create a CI pipeline for the, the XS Weekly, right? And that CI pipeline would check for duplicates and then generate the, uh, and then generate the, Oh, God, I'm so slow today. And then generate the, not just check our commit for duplicates, but also generate and add the oh, index, search index for us that we can then just load and use. That might be an option. Uh, don't worry, feel free to take me off the topic. Fine, it's just, you know, I'm, I've been, it's... It's um, it's it's a public holiday here today, so I've been doing nothing all day, and my brain is basically like you know like oh, I don't want to think today. <laughs> so it's it's just it's it's a natural thing on Halloween, I think. <laughs> all right, um, right. So let me think. Is there Node.js? Let's see. Full text search. So is there anything that provides el Elastic Lunar JS? 
lunar, a bit like solar, but much smaller and not as bright. That's a that's an interesting way of putting it. And it's JavaScript. That actually might be okay. So someone literally rewritten solar in JavaScript. This is kind of awesome. Uh, if you didn't know, solar is the basis for the um, elastic search, for example, it's an indexing engine and it's really, really good. I made you a promise on the discord. Really, let me have a look at that. Uh, you start a project before Friday, I will join in. I have a boring job in the afternoon listening to people. I can work on my stuff in class. Okay, I will definitely take you up on that. So <laughs> I would not say no to any help that might come to this because I'm sure that if I would do it alone, it will take quite some time with my schedule. Okay, so I actually got an indexing engine here. Uh, where's the GitHub repo? So this is the Travis and this is the lunar thing, right? We got this elastic lunar. So I guess this is the elastic search, but built in JavaScript and based on lunar, right? Yep. Okay. Search. This is awesome, actually. Okay. All right. Um, so let me just write this down over here. So we got this thing and we got lunar. And you know what? I have to cover this in BXJS weekly because this is first time I see it and it is actually really awesome. Okay, uh, so this field this adds. Yeah, so this is the lunar itself is a very low level thing. But I guess elastic lunar is what we want. And here's the question, what kind of license does it have? Please tell me it's MIT or something like GPL. Contributing where's the license file? Come on. Where's license and it is MIT freaking awesome. Okay, uh, let me start that because this looks amazing. All right, and it is well, okay, six days ago, this quite frequently updated. This is great. Right, okay, so we can actually use that to on pull request to first of all, check for duplicates, we can actually use that index as well, right? And then generate the index and dump it into a file so that our Node.js app can get the git hook that will tell tell the uh, hey something is updated on the master branch then it will pull that um, index load it into memory and allow users to actually run over it i think that's going to be a bit of tr a bit tricky to um uh, okay so let me let me write this down so scenario let's call it scenario or i guess uh, let's, let's do it like this in memory using pr uh, ci pipeline and a pipeline so step one two branches master and dev develop or whatever commit to develop, then send PR to master, CI pipeline um, indexes, or I guess re-indexes all, uh, all files and uploads index somewhere or publishes as artifact, I guess, as artifact. There's also a question how to handle that artifact. Um, on merge GitHub triggers webhook, server downloads um, new index, replaces old index with new one in memory. Is this possible? So this is also a question. And um, um, yeah, basically user can search in new index. Okay, so that seems like a, I'll say it later, but this seems like a possible option. Basically, this is the in memory search, right? So and uh, gonna throw this in here. And what you're basically seeing now is how I approach majority of my development. Um, like the thing is that we still need this first bit, right? So we still need this CI pipeline. The only question is how is it gonna 
validate the whole like find duplicates uh, throwing them into mongodb or Elasticsearch or algolia is also the option from ci and then just saying hey is there anything you know close to already existing things in index uh, <laughs> there we go yeah okay so this is the same question I guess, yeah, I guess this in memory would probably be the most efficient. Again, as I said, you know, we have the folder that is like 300 kilobytes in size. So this is not, this should not be memory intensive. So I guess this is our best approach. Um, let's just leave it at that. And I guess we don't need Lunar here. We'll just take Elastic Lunar. Uh, okay, so this means that the first step we're going to write is the script that would uh, that would basically do the CI thing. Save your doc, save later. No, what if computer crashes? I'm having a heart attack. No, but that's that's the VS code, right? I can just close it right now. And then it'd be like code. And uh, here you go, because it auto saves the unsaved docs into some temporary file. So even if it crashes, you can still recover it. This is why I'm so chill about it. This is why I love VS Code, by the way. <laughs> it is relatively safe to actually not save the files. But you are right, I probably should save it somewhere. <laughs> Just for the sake of it. Um, EXJS, EXJS website plan.md, let's call it this way. Okay. All right. Um, okay, so this would address our there's yeah. <laughs> I I glad that helped you, mate. <laughs> so here's the question: like, um, how do we present the archive and current the web page? One option can we? So one option would be to obviously just say, hey, here's the links files. We can obviously extract the episode names from the file name. I should probably maybe start adding them on top as well at some point. Uh, oh yeah, there's also the old format that doesn't even have anything like articles, news or any other components to it, I guess. Huh, I get maybe rendering this as is would be okay. Just Just a nice format and maybe split it by sections or something. I guess we would need like markdown parser here uh current page this is fine so just render markdown as page parse episodes render with uh sections render okay let's call it this we're under using headers as sections right and uh, the service, this is going to be saying C below. So I guess, I guess that should work. Do you guys have any other suggestions or thoughts? Because, you know, I think this is basically all I can come up with right now. And I'm thinking that I probably would start building that. Um, we also need to find some sort of a nice design for a layout like this. I, I'm, I'm guessing I'll just take Bulma as always. <laughs> I just absolutely love this framework. Ah, uh, they don't have the global nav thing, right? Opponents nav bar. Yeah, yeah, that should be enough. So like three, three categories and then maybe search bar or something. EXGS, I should make a logo. All right. Uh, yeah, that sounds like... Uh, um, I mean, I don't even know if we need a framework here. It's like the whole thing is relatively static right now. So this uh, this page is static. The This is essentially a rendering of the markdown. Search is, well, slightly dynamic. And collection of the videos would basically... I would also want to auto-generate that somehow. This is actually, by the way, a good point to think about. Connection of dev to posts. Mm. Okay, so options, uh, GitHub repo with all links. This is one option. Auto scrape 
from dev to using author and tags question mark uh dev2 likely has an api that is actually a good idea <laughs> i probably should check um let's see code of conduct dev shops events about um no terms of use conduct code of conduct terms of use well at least not a public one but that is uh that is a good question settings I mean, they likely have some. I probably can poke Ben on the Twitter and ask him if there's anything. Like, I'm guessing there is something in there, but um, mentorship. No, that's not what we want, right? So dashboard. Here's the question. So I can go to my profile, right? And can I be like uh, dot JSON? Does that work? No. <laughs> well, that does kind of work, but but that's not what I expected to see. Okay. <laughs> Alrighty then. Um, what 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 would happen if I would do this? I'm I'm now curious. Wait a second. Uh, so there is some API here, which is wow. That is interesting output over here. Okay. Um, you can request JSON, but it returns something. That is weird. I uh, I don't think. I mean. The worst case, we can obviously reverse engineer it. I mean, I don't think it's going to be that much reverse engineering, to be honest. So we can, we can, we can just check check it out. So it is a single page app, right? So theoretically, it could stop loading things. If I click on dashboard right now, um, I probably should reload first because it probably cached the data, right? So come on, clean all of that. Now, please stop loading everything. And I'll go to the my profile i am guessing okay we need xhr requests and this is something that is where's my response data okay this is the whole page uh, oh this is from service worker actually that's interesting uh xhr fetch service worker huh Base data, there you go. That's something interesting. Okay, this is authentication stuff. Counts. This is something that is zero, basically. Um, I, I, again, you know, I think it would be a better idea to just ask Ben if there's anything. Um, why this will work? I mean, come on. SPA does requests, right? So there's got to be a request there that will fetch exactly the data we want. And since we're navigating from the client side, it is going to be there. So at one point we will find it, but I just want to waste my time doing that when I can just ask one of the developers and say, Hey, I need an API. Can you please stare something like this? Because I mean, we found this thing, right? So there's got to be more to this. But anyway, so this is the thing. Yes, scrape uh, from dev to using author tags, um, dev to API. This is other thing. Okay, um, yeah, maybe GitHub repo with links would be better as well for like discoverability. But uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I think that's a nice outline. And um, going back to the question about the framework, you know, if you haven't watched my streams before, you know that I'm a huge, or maybe you don't know, actually. <laughs> I'm a big fan of Next.js. And this is what we're probably going to be using and uh, react and all that kind of shiz. By the way, Tim, uh, the disclosure crap, it's a lie. They can tell you what part of your video goes against the guidelines because the process automated is not executed by a person. Is that right? It's a binary. Yes or no. That's why several people complain about. That's what I thought at some point as well. I was like, you know, there's no way they would know what exactly is going on unless it's some sort of a machine learning thing that just tells you with uh, some percentage of um, certainty that, hey, this is like 90% breaking our terms of service, which is garbage. This is not how you do machine learning. This use, I've also had an amazing comment on my, uh, on the video that I posted complaining about that. There is way too many notifications right now. Uh, so there was a video. Let me just try to open that and mute it immediately. I just want to read you the comment, which was uh, kind of crazy. So there you go. There's the comment. And uh, 
So here's here's the comment from the dev marketeer. Uh, he has a YouTube channel with 53,000 subscribers. So he's quite big. He's doing PHP and marketing videos. So if you're interested, do check him out. Uh, here's what he's saying. Um, this happens and it sucks that it happened to you. I had one of my videos flagged for a known reason like this and it had me panicking. And there's a bit more details. It really is frustrating that you have no clue where it is getting. Google won't tell you and they won't let you address what is obviously a misunderstanding. The strikes are handed out by robots that make mistakes all the time. I have videos that uh, the YouTube algorithms loves, but then uh, exact video like other gets a strike. Then removing the thumbnail solves the problem. The thumbnail was just text on green teal background, but for some reason the YouTube bot had a problem with it. Now here's the, like, I, I'm, I'm really eager to try it now, almost to the extent when I want to re-upload that old video and, you know, add it to the same playlist. And um, at the same time, although I probably cannot do the same thumbnail because I don't have the old one saved, but whatever. So the thing is that what he says is that if you don't appeal, but remove the thumbnail, it will automatically clear the strike in majority of cases, which is bonkers. This means that their algorithm considers the uh, thumbnail change to be significant enough to decrease the certainty of the decision to just remove the strike at all, which is absolutely ridiculous. The other thing is that the appeals are also not done by people majority of time, or I guess maybe all of time. It seems like all of the people who have appealed always had the appeal rejected, which again, why do you have appeal then? This is like, what the fuck, YouTube? And um, yeah, it's just so, dis you know, like it's, it's a Google, right? It's an AI corporation and oh, Jesus Christ, why does it have to be like this? Why does, so you would expect like the, let's just, 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 just bear with me for a second, right? So we have, we have a Google, we have Alphabet, a huge corporation. And they demo things like Android, um, what was it, callback service? What was the name of this thing? No, no, that's not what I want. Android um, booking voice. What was the name of the thing? I completely forgot. Right, Google Assistant that mimics human voice and that is indistinguishable from real humans, right? And then you have a YouTube where we have a bot that flags videos because they have a wrong thumbnail. <laughs> like, how does this add up? How can you have AI teams that are so freaking different? Uh, I mean, the appeal, I don't know if it was automated or not. It did, definitely took quite a lot of time, but... If they on their own don't know what's wrong with it, then how can they, you know, it's it's a 10 minute video. Theoretically, you can review the appeal in 20 minutes, right? You just look at the video, you look at the hashtags, you look at the description, you look at the thumbnail and you'll be like, okay, you know, this is fine. I've shared the video. There's literally nothing in there that is not allowed on YouTube. I'm not running around nude in the background and I'm not trying to kill people or like punch people in the face or whatever. It's just like literally me talking over the existing third party libraries that are everywhere else on the YouTube. And I get a strike and then there's like 200 million other videos that talk about exactly the same things and they're fine for like seven years. I, it is just like it's straight up bad, right? Okay. It's just like, there's, it's, it's just bad. Um, <laughs> okay, apparently, apparently Twitch Automod doesn't like JS educational porn phrase, but I'm gonna allow that. Oh <laughs> uh, no, it's added the per, oh, it's permitted the whole porn term. Well, let's hope I'm not gonna regret that later. But you know what? I can always bomb ban people. Let's just, let's just leave it at that. Okay. Um. Uh, JavaScript means sex in any strange language. Who knows? Uh, I don't think that's the case. <laughs> but anyway, screw that. It's basically, you know, now I have a place to go and it's really cool that the Dev2 actually, once again, just a shout out to those guys. Dev2 is amazing. If you are still not there, go check it out. It's a really great community and there's a lot of high quality content and getting more and more of it. 
And it's really cool that basically they say, hey, bring all of your YouTube channel here because we are re ready to keep it and we'll host your videos, you know? And it's like, I, I've, I've actually downloaded the, um, downloaded my channel and, and this is how it looks. There is, okay, there's like a bunch of metadata, but this is, this is all my channel. This is everything that I could download and uh, come on, external hard drive. Start, start, start moving faster, come on. This is my external USB hard drive that is like few terabytes and uh, there you go, 74 gigs of videos. I mean, some of them are actually gaming videos, so I guess I can remove those safely because I don't care much about them. Uh, yeah, there's definitely a lot of them. <laughs> but uh, it's really cool that they are ready to accept all of my, uh, all of my, you know, older courses and I can publish building products with JavaScript and building data science with JavaScript and all of that on DevTool. Like this is really cool. Okay, um, right, that's, I think that's basically all I wanted to do on the stream. Uh, we've planned out the whole website thing and I think I'm gonna start slowly thinking about that, maybe create a rep, maybe we can create a rep right, right. No, it's hard to speak. So <laughs> let me just create a repository for that. This is what I wanna say. Uh, and uh, maybe I should uh, register websites. Maybe I should just get a domain name for that as well. So we will expect more lives on Twitch from now on. Well, I'm, I'm at least two, you know, on Wednesdays and Saturdays as usual, but I'll definitely try to get more done maybe. Like I'm not promising anything, but this is, uh, I really want to do more like because you know, it, it's really fun. It, it's really cool to just sit here and talk to you guys and do program silly things or maybe not so silly things on streams. So yes. Um, uh, hey, Haptic, I'm not ending the stream yet. I mean, if you are leaving, then definitely see you later. If you are not leaving, then feel free. So I'm basically I'm, I'm gonna be here for a few more minutes. And you know, if you guys want to discuss anything, if you have any questions, feel free to throw them into the chat. And we can just talk about that stuff. Meanwhile, let me just uh, BXGS website. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm gonna be very original. It's gonna be BXGS website. <laughs> Initialize with uh, repository, we're gonna have uh, node.js git ignore because why not? And it's gonna be MIT licensed. There we go. I think, yeah, that looks sign. Okay, so you know what? Uh, feel free to throw in some questions in the chat. I meanwhile will um, will just uh, clone a repo and quickly scaffold the basic project so that we actually have something to work with later on, you know? I have a call, but I'll check back in. Okay, you know, have fun with your call or I guess maybe it's a work call, then uh, good luck with it. Okay, uh, good, we got this. I guess we should open the folder and website. There you go. Um, maybe I should have actually moved the readme in here. That sounds like a good idea, right? Uh, whoops. Git at uh, bhs plan, there we go. Git commit at plan to the repo, plan doc to the repo, yep, there you go. And uh, we can npm init minus y, so we will init the basic project and make a very basic structure for it. And I guess we can wrap the stream up over, you know, after that. Um, unless there are any things you guys want to discuss, because I'm not extremely busy tonight, so I can be here for uh, quite some more time. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to be crazy. I'm going to be like, hey, uh, we're going to install Next.js. And we are gonna install, um, we're gonna install the React with hooks. I really wanna give them a shot. I mean, I played around a bit with them, but I want to try them in a real app. An open RFC, learning hooks. So, uh, no, this is, how do, I, how do I try them out? Open RFC, I think it's like React Next right now, right? Uh, NPM JS. Is there React? Please show me the React package. And uh, versions, and we got the next is, yeah, okay, so we want the React next, cool. Uh, hooks overview, yeah, okay, so basically we do, uh, uh, right, oh, I, I forgot to disable uh, Windows Defender, so the installs are gonna be 
slow, but you know what? We can fix it right now. Third protection, real time off. It is a bit annoying that you have to do this when you develop, but uh, I'm hoping they will fix it in one of the future updates because this is kind of silly that having antivirus enabled slows down everything. Okay, npm install paste this at next. So we are gonna be rolling with hooks and I'm probably gonna regret that, but it's gonna be fun anyway. All right, cool. So we got that. Now we take the scripts, we throw them into the package JSON. Uh, we are gonna add tests later on. And we got pages index.js. Yes, the VSL suffers greatly from the um, Windows Defender. So if you are using Windows Defender, disabling the real-time threat protection could speed it up a lot. Um, it was also noted to me by one of the viewers. Again, I remember that I, I already mentioned that and, and one of you guys was like, it was me who told you that. And I'm sorry, I am terrible with remembering who told me what. <laughs> so I'm going to do that again. But yes, this is like the VSL without the real-time protection enabled is super fast and um, yeah, it is like way better. Okay, so we got that, we got the page here and you know what? I'm gonna use the hooks right away. Import react. From, no, we don't need React. We need like use use state, right? So it's just it's just let's just, uh, let's just do this. No, from React, right? And then we're gonna have const uh, counter and update counter. Uh, whoops, use state and start with zero. It's gonna be amazing usage of the hooks. I think I hope I remember correctly how to use them. But uh, yes, it's gonna be, this is gonna be H1. Welcome to BXJS, uh, BXJS, JS. That's exactly what I wanna say. This is gonna be counter, right? And this is gonna be a button that is gonna say up the number. And on click, we're gonna have, gonna have here a function that says increment increment there we go and it's going to be update counter with counter plus one right and uh, man i really love how the code looks with uh, hooks it's just so freaking clean okay let me go into vsl here npm run dev i think I did not screw it up and that should work. So we're gonna find out in a second. Logalos 3000. And it actually does work. Amazing. Hey, hey. So yeah. <laughs> okay, you know what? Let me just commit that. It, like, man, hooks are just so great. I uh, probably should not do that here. Hooks are really, really cool indeed. And that's not even the coolest bit about them. Mid at basic next JS app structure. Get push. All right. Um, you know what? While we are at it, we can probably also add some styling, maybe a bit. You know, just to just to get this thing rolling. Uh, because I feel a bit silly by just adding one simple counter and not, not doing anything else in here. Uh, okay, you know what, npm run dev over here, and then I'll just hide the console because we don't really need that. I know we actually do need that because I'm going to install additional things. Right, so we're going to use Bulma, right? The typical setup, npm install Bulma. Um, view docs. So we need our index page. We are going to import Bulma, no, Bulma. Um, if I remember the correct path, node modules, Bulma, uh, CSS, is it in CSS? Bulma min CSS, yeah, there you go. Okay, so this is what we want. Bulma CSS min CSS. Did it actually copy it? Okay. Bulma min CSS, I'm just gonna type it myself. I think that should, add oh, right, we need the, um, 
Uh, Next.js CSS plugin is what we need. CSS, not that. We need uh, next CSS. There we go. Yes, uh, copy that, throw it in here. All right. I mean, hooks are very new. They are still in alpha version. So as you can see here, I have installed the pre-release version of React. They were announced like last week. So do not use them in production yet, but uh, they are really, really cool. And I just want to try them. <laughs> I, as I said, you know, I'm probably going to regret that because they're going to, they, they are highly likely to change the API for hooks or they might break it, but it's just, they are so cool that I want to play around with them and I don't mind refactoring the code a bit because I don't think that website is going to be that complicated. Uh, so yeah, uh, we are going to just, you know, play around with them and see how that works out. Do we have the Bulma styling yet? And uh, no, oh, right. I forgot. Blah. I forgot to um, add the plugin completely. We need Next.js config. There we go. So next, uh, next uh, config.js. And we want to do this. And we want to restart the server. And I think that should work. But yes, I mean, I'm really, it's like, you know, the interesting thing is that I'm not the only one hyped for hooks because there is view hooks now. There is, there you go. There's an experimental hooks implementation in Vue.js. There is web components hooks now. There is Svelte hooks now. There is uh, Preact hooks now. So basically all the UI libraries that are, that basically support functional programming at least a bit started implementing hooks. I don't think we'll ever see them in the, um, uh, what do you call it? In the Angular because it's a bit too object oriented, but uh, yeah, this is <laughs> failed to compile. There we go. Okay, we got the styling going and now we need to, uh, where's my start? Where's my layouts? There we go. So we got section, section, we got container is what we want, right? So we're gonna style it in a very basic way. Um, I'm gonna kill the hooks for now. I just wanted to try it. Um, absolutely not needed, but okay. So save that. We theoretically should now have. Yep, we have the nice web page. I guess we can start by adding a simple nav bar and uh, maybe call it a day at that. So let's create a components folder. Nav bar JS, right? So where is our components uh, navigation bar? Uh, so yeah, if you're interested in hooks, there was this uh, React hooks. It was literally the first, yeah, making sense of React hooks, the first search on the uh, React hooks in Google now from Dan Abramov, one of the authors in the, uh, or one of the co-developers of React. This is basically all you have to know about hooks right now with a ton of things. And there's also his talk from the React Conf, which is amazing. So I would just recommend going through that. And after that, you will know everything you need to know about them. All right, uh, let us just copy this thing and throw it in export default. We just want to, I kind of love it that now you can just have uh, functional components everywhere without actually, um, without actually writing any classes or anything like that. Why don't you format that? Is there like something broken? I'm guessing there is an unterminated. Ah, oh, yeah, there you go. There's image. Okay. There is image. And is there anything else that is unterminated? I feel like, yeah, that's the divider. There we go. And now it's formatted. Okay, cool. So now we can, uh, Import navbar from components and navbar, right? And just uh, plug it in over here. Navbar. And um, here's our navbar. And it is, yeah, it's a bit too zoomed in, but there you go. Okay, we can clean it up a bit and uh, make some. So we need the logo here. I can adjust this later. We need this area burger thing. Also, I don't know if we would need it really. Maybe we don't. I'll kill it for now. We got the nav bar menu. We will have three buttons. We won't need any other things in here. 
search um, info, or I guess let's call it about BXJS, right? What what else did we had? Oh, no, we had the weekly thing, right? Weekly, uh, or I guess maybe BX. Let's let's just call it completely BXJS content. Let's call it this way, I guess. And we don't need this stuff. I think that should do it. Yes, that looks quite nice. So we just need the logo here, and then we just need three different pages. Um, was that so? We had the info page, we had the weekly, and we had the videos, or let's call it content, which is fine. Mm. Yeah. All right. Um, get status. Get ads. What's up, cat? Let me just check. So we added the navbar and Bulma, git commit at Bulma with basic styling and a navbar. Great commit message. Okay. Right. Uh, so we got the basics down. We got the plan here. And I guess we can just continue building that at one of the future live streams. Or maybe I just... I don't know. Here's the question to you guys. Do you want to see me build the whole thing or can I just build it in my free time whenever I have it? And then, you know, you could just, uh, I don't know, we can do a stream where I explain everything or you could just be like, okay. <laughs> All right, then we can, we can do it on live streams. That's fine. I think it should not take too long. All right, got it, got it. Then we'll do live streams. Um, it probably won't take too long. So I guess the trickiest part, as we already discussed, would be the whole uh, PR CI pipeline. Right, okay, then I guess this is gonna be our next large project, sort of interrupting the coding game. But uh, yes, YouTube is slightly screwing over my plans to do things in a proper manner, but hey. Okay, um, yeah, I guess that's that's it from my side, guys. So if you have anything you want to ask, uh, feel free to send it right now. Uh, what is this? Sale Clee? Is that the? Why is it loading? Uh, we are open alpha release. Join us on Spectrum. Okay, this is something new. What is this? GitHub app demo. Set up CI in less than a minute. Um, like when I see things like this, my first question is, how is this different from Travis? How is this different from Circle CI? How is this different from 225 different other CI services that are out there? Um, why should I use this instead of Travis that I know works really well? Uh, they are using, is that, that GitHub actions, the ones that they've added? Because I don't, as much as I would love to try them, I don't have access to GitHub Actions. <laughs> Unfortunately, that is not going to fly for me. Pull request. This is a uh, check. Checks. Oh, no, that's a checks. I mean, why is it so blurry? Like the video qualities. I feel like my glasses are dirty. Oh, oh, okay. There we go. There's the checks thing. Is that is that always been there? Wait a second. Uh, what's up, cat? <laughs> He's just here to ask for food. <laughs> okay. Right, let me just find something that has PRs. Um, I think this one had... No, wait. Didn't I? There's gotta be a pull request somewhere. You want a QA with a cat? He's not the cat that would sit around. He's like... I think he has a hidden engine somewhere that never dies and he just like runs around like insane cat and attacks everything that he can see. So it's not, it's not exactly the best cat for QA, you know? <laughs> okay, let me think. I wanted to see a PR somewhere. Oh yeah, Exoframe has a lot of them. <gasps> Exoframe hit 500 stars, yay! Okay, this is awesome. But that's not what I want. I want PRs and we got a checks. Okay, so the checks are there. Cats have a plan to kill us all. Well, that depends on the cat. Uh, we have three cats here and one of them definitely does. So the black one that you saw just now, 
The other two actually don't. They are super cuddly and uh, don't have anything like this in mind. But this black one, he's yes, he's a murder machine for sure. Okay, uh, so there's checks, but uh, what, do you, what do you mean how to set up? This doesn't tell me anything. It does look like actions, because this reminds me of the GitHub actions menu that I've saw before. And I don't know how that works. Pricing, duration, two minute builds, four cent. That is quite expensive actually. <laughs> 500 free build minutes per month. Okay, that's decent. Sell CI, circle CI. Oh, okay. Eh, I see. So they are taking basically on a better hardware from their perspective. Okay. Now here's the comparison I was looking for. Um, all right, let's check the docs. I am curious now. Simple Node.js pipeline. Okay, so it's just the YAML file again. I mean... You know what? I'm used to Travis CI and all of all of its quirks, so I'm just gonna gonna roll with that. So we're fine. We're fine. All right. Um, websites. I probably should pin that to the top, I guess. Customize. Um, where's my website? There we go. Hopefully, you know that's not exactly done, but uh, let's just put it here. A weekly website proposals. Hey, Anku, welcome to the stream. Yeah, doing good. We're actually ne <laughs> nearly finished for today, but uh, you know, you got the last couple of minutes. We've started building a BXJS website, which I think should be fun. And um, yes, we have the BXJS website plan over here. And I'm going to be building that on the live streams for the next, I don't know how, how many that will take, probably two to three live streams, maybe a bit more. Like the, the thing I'm worried about is that um, index reloading in memory on the web, uh, GitHub webhook. I am not exactly sure how that's gonna work, but uh, we're gonna see what we can do about that. Maybe worker threads? That actually sounds like a nice use case for it. Because you can, you can get a worker, right? You can load the index there, you can execute everything you want. Then if you don't need it, you can just shut it down, load the new worker and start doing the requests again. That actually sounds like a nice approach. So we're gonna see if that works out. Well, okay, um, that's actually it from my side, guys. Do you have any more questions of, or links to share or suggestions or whatever you want to discuss? I'm open to that. Um, seems like you started late today. No, I have not started late today. There's been a daylight saving and um, we are now one hour ahead, I think. So, Yes, time zones are an ass and time saving is also a pain in ass. And yes, yeah, so we are now basically uh, like it's 2024 at my, my place, as you can see here. So it is just the time saving bollocks basically. And apparently, you know, speaking of time zones, time zones are hard because um, if we go to the dashboard and if we go to the uh, extensions, you will see that actually the extension now shows the wrong time. It says I'm going to stream at 6 p.m. but it's actually 7 p.m. because it, they also don't account for time zones, which is kind of silly. But okay, seems like uh, there's no more questions. Um, yeah, thank you for watching as usual. Uh, thank you for, you know, sitting with me through all of that and uh, seeing with like bearing with me through the whole YouTube drama. It's a bit annoying and the whole robot business is like, ugh. I'm gonna try the trick with the removing um, thumbnail next time and see if it really throws the robot off. I'm also curious if you can do like smaller changes, like, you know, editing the description or changing the tags. Would that also throw off the, the AI mechanism that detects the violations? It would be interesting to experiment with actually. Maybe I should create a new YouTube account that just, you know, violates things and then figure out what exactly throws the robot off just enough to be considered not violation. That could be a fun project. <laughs> Probably gonna get banned really quick for that, but... Okay. <laughs> yes, indeed, that is a terrible idea. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, yeah, thank you for staying with me. Thank you for watching. As usual, there's gonna be a BXJS weekly news live stream on Saturday. And there may be some gaming live streams in between. So if you are interested in video games, 
do make sure to check them out whenever I'm streaming. And uh, if not, then we're gonna continue building the BXGS website next Wednesday. So huge thanks for watching and uh, have an awesome Halloween, have an awesome rest of the week and I see you next time. Bye.